It's actually a real pleasure to be here. As I say, it's been a while since I've preached in Port St. Mary, and it's always a it's always an honour and a privilege to come before your family and, and bring what you um, and bring what God has on His heart. And as um, Rolf said, my name is Ben Halpin. If you're a visitor, um, I live in Castletown, and I also serve our Castletown congregation. And uh, yeah, you're very welcome. It's awesome to have you here. Um, I'm sorry that you have to listen to my voice and not Rolf's. Um, <laughs> see, that was a compliment. That was a compliment, Rolf. There you go. Um, yeah, I've been really looking forward to uh, uh, to bringing the word um, this morning. And for those who have been coming on a regular basis, well, you'll know that we've been going through um, a series about being one and being one together and there's been different topics like having one heart in Jesus, um, one mind, one spirit um, and I've got the privilege of talking to us this morning about um, having one purpose or being one together with a purpose which is um, probably a better way of putting it and uh, uh, as you do if you are preaching, you've got to wrestle all week with what you feel God is saying. And I wrestled with this idea of what it is to be one. What does that mean? What does it look like? Um, and I looked at different ways that people can form groups or become one with others uh, throughout the world. And some people will do it because actually they have a, a purpose in common. It's like protesters, you know, they have a purpose. They have something that, they f that draws um, them to each other because they have a purpose. Um, but the difference between us and them is actually we don't come together because we have a purpose. We come together because we are loved and return love to Jesus. That is why we are one. That is, that is the glue that holds us together as a family. Um, and then the purpose comes in after that. And there's so much more to being one than, than, than meets the eye. It's, it's more than just meeting up. It's more than just uh, loving people. Um, we read in Philippians 2 verses 1 to 4. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. And it's really cool. So we have this love, and this love binds us together. This love uh, creates us as one, but then there's a choice that comes into that when we are one. We actually have to choose to be of one mind together also. We have to choose to put other people's interests above our own interests. So for me to be one with, with you guys, actually I've got to put you guys above me. And it's also, we've, we've got to put um, actually the thoughts of Jesus above ourselves also. That's what it is to be one with each other and one with the Lord. But um, to have one with a purpose, and I hear you say, what is actually our purpose? And that's um, uh, all over uh, Scripture what our purpose is. And we read it in Philippians 1, 27 to 28. Only, only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or I'm absent, I may hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel, and not frightened in anything by your opponents. This is a clear sign to them of their destruction, but of your salvation, and that from God. That faith of the gospel. You see, our purpose as one is to spread the gospel or to build kingdom however you want to put it it's to bring actually God's kingdom on earth it's to be telling people uh, about the good news of what Jesus has done that is our purpose and uh, you know, I, 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 I did make myself laugh when I was sort of writing this and listening because I sort of went 
you know, you can kind of wrap that up there if you really wanted to go, Roy or Rolf, what response shall we do from there? Because that is the purpose. That is our purpose, is to go out and to, and to, to bring the kingdom, to preach the good news, to, to see people saved. And we could all go in our heads knowing, oh yeah, fabulous, awesome, yeah, that's our, well done, Ben, good job, you know, that's our purpose, thanks for letting us know, we'll bear that in mind. Um, but actually there's so much more to it than just, oh yes, that is our purpose. Um, and I, I, I love that I used to actually go so I've been in this congregation for three years now and I used to go to Douglas congregation for a lot of years before that and one thing that, uh, that Jonathan said that always stuck with me is that um, when you come to Jesus when you come to know Jesus when you come to accept him it's like you're going through a revolving door because you come through this the, the, the one half of the door and you see Jesus and you're like yes this is me awesome fabulous I just want to stay here and, and, and be and, and, and delve into the presence of my saviour of, of being with Jesus um, but what we find is very quickly we come in to the presence of Jesus and then we follow that revolving door around and actually we end up walking away from him please him a heart it's not that we come to Jesus and he goes awesome no nope, but not for you get out of here um, we, we revolve away because he gives us a job he says to us fabulous yes you're in the kingdom hallelujah party in heaven but you have a purpose and you can't do it stood in front of me actually you've got to be sent out with my help of the Holy Spirit um, to do the purpose that I have for you and it's not that he doesn't want to be around you. That's what the Holy Spirit is for. That's how we enjoy his presence is through um, the Holy Spirit. And actually we read in Matthew 28, 18 to 20. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. And I've asked this question so many times of God and made this mistake. And I'm pretty sure the vast majority of people will have done the same thing where they come to God and go, God, God what, is, what is my purpose? What is it that I have to do so that when I get into heaven, I hear those well done, good and faithful servants? What is the project of Ben Halpin? What is the project of Josh Jacobs? Have, have we asked that question before? Like, God, what is my specific task that is you know, different from everybody else's? And the, 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 the poor thing about that, that sentiment is most people don't realize that although we do have gifts, we do have things to bring, God does have a task for each and every one of us and different things he wants us to do. Um, actually, that is on top of what our original purpose is, which is to go make disciples, baptize them uh, and teach them in the ways of Jesus. If you don't get that bit right first, you will never fully walk in what God has for you personally. It tells us in the word, black and white, it's the greatest gift, one of the greatest gifts God has given us is his scripture. So actually, if we're not going to listen to that and actually do as he asks, how are we ever going to walk into the fullness of what he does have for us? And I love the context of, of this scripture. It's actually Jesus, he's sat with his disciples um, and, I, and, and I want you to note what he doesn't say to them. He doesn't say, um, I want you to go and prophesy over all people of all nations. I want you to go and let that spirit just leak out wherever you go. I want you to tell people um, everything that I, I, I choose to say. It's not what he says. He doesn't say, I want you to go out and be elders. You, I want you to go and be an elder in Rome, and that is your purpose. I, don't want, I want you to go and, and be an elder in um, Corinth. He doesn't say that. And he doesn't say, um, go and be apostles. He says, go, make disciples, baptize and teach. And that enough, that, that, that alone should be enough for us to do. That alone should be our drive because that's what he asks. That's what he asks of us. Um, and you might, you might agree with me on this. I hope you agree with me on this. That it's a fabulous thing to see a new Christian born. To see a person reborn into the faith. Because they have such pep and zeal. And all they want to do is scream from the, uh, from the rooftops that they are saved. That that hole has been filled. All they want to do is tell everyone they come across. 
even if they don't have the right words, the right knowledge, they don't have a good understanding of Scripture, all they want to do is tell people. And what they lack in knowledge and wisdom, actually they make up for in passion and zeal for what has happened to them. Um, actually, uh, what you'll find is over time that passion and zeal will uh, start to dwindle. Uh, passion and steel and zeal will start to uh, uh, actually fade just a little bit. Um, and actually what you find is they have to uh, actually learn, they have to relearn um, what their, their purpose is. Um, in Romans 1.16 we read, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And another reason we should be spreading this, uh, this thing, uh, uh, spreading the gospel, is actually this idea of love, of love again. Actually, with the two commandments Jesus gives, love God and love thy neighbor as thyself. And you know, we, we have that thing of loving God, we come to church, we, we tithe, we worship, and yes, it's awesome, it's awesome between me and God, but what does it really look like to love your neighbor as yourself? It's easy, it's easy in this context. It's easy to love you guys because we are at one um, under him. But to the everybody out there, they're still our neighbor. We still have to love them. And to truly love a person more than yourself, you have to share the greatest gift you've ever been given, which is your salvation. You have to be willing to, to put yourself out on a limb and go, this is the greatest thing that has ever happened to me and I love you too much for you not to share in it. I need to tell you about Jesus. I need to tell you that if you don't believe, this is where you're going. We have to love people enough. But how do we share the gospel? Uh, I'm not necessarily going to give us practical ideas um, uh, on how to evangelize or, or anything like that, but rather um, uh, how our attitude towards it should be. Because actually we should uh, spread the gospel through his church. And now, bear with me a minute here. So a lot of you uh, who know me well will know that I studied uh, martial arts for a lot of years. And uh, more specifically, I studied karate. And I actually loved doing karate. It was phenomenally good. It was phenomenal good fun. Uh, Rolf was going to come and help me demonstrate. I'm only joking. <laughs> I'm only joking. No, um, no, no. But I, I used to love doing karate. And I actually used to be part of the Isle of Man Karate Federation. And we have, uh, they have clubs everywhere, all over the world, and what we would do is every Easter, one club would host our annual tournament, and I lived for this tournament. It was fabulous. We would go England, Scotland, Wales, Greece, anywhere, Europe, we would just go anywhere um, where we had one of our clubs, and we would compete, and it was marvelous, and it was always a nice thing to come away with a trophy or three. Um, and I think the thing that it taught me, though, was that uh, with something like that, it wasn't always about my achievement. It wasn't about uh, the trophies I had won. Um, actually, because we went as a club, it, it wasn't about my glory, but rather my teacher's glory, the person who ran the club, the one who poured out into us. It was his glory that actually, all the, all the if we won, it was, it was him that everything went to, because he was the one who'd put us in that position. And it's the exact same with the gospel. You know, we read in Ephesians 3, 10 to 11, uh, so that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was according to the eternal purpose that he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. See, actually, we don't reach people for the gospel for ourselves. Another thing that Jonathan said is one of the most uh, uh, dangerous things on earth is one man and his Bible. Um, because he doesn't fall under any authority. He doesn't fall under any kind of guidance. And he can use bits of truth for his own gain. But God's blueprint is that his church would ultimately always point to him. That his church is the one who, who goes to people and tells them about, about Jesus. His church is what is recognized as his body on earth. 
And if we're not connected in with a family, if we're not connected into a body, we're glorifying ourselves and not Jesus, not the one who has saved us. Also, as individuals, we, we don't grow on our own. On our own, we'll grow stunted if we don't have the encouragement and the love and, and also the rebuke of the ones we love. You'll, you'll never get past a certain point if actually we don't, if I won't be the person, I wouldn't be the person in God that I am if it wasn't for you guys, if it wasn't for, for Rolf, who encourages me week in, week out, rebukes me month in, month out. <laughs> um, but uh, w- yes, we are individuals, but we are one and we need to be, we need to act as a body. Um, and a wee demonstration for you, just to show you what I mean. So this is a uh, bowstring. Now, its only purpose is to fire an arrow. Um, but on its own, it's never going to do it. And this is the actual bow itself. And its only purpose is to fire an arrow. However, on its own, again, it's never going to do it. However, here we go, there we are. When you put them together, I would get it wrong when I'm doing it in front of people, there we go. (laughs) There we go, that's better. When you put it together, now it can fire an arrow. Two different things, but when you put them together, they help each other fulfill their purpose. So I am only going to fulfill my purpose when I'm attached to you guys. What I'm really, really sad about is I have got arrows with big foam tips on, and Rolf was going to stand there. There's going to be an arrow, there was going to be an apple, and it was going to be a marvelous moment. However, in my haste this morning, I forgot. Both the apple <laughs> and, um, the, and, the, and the, there's always next week. Oh, Fab, he's actually preaching next week. I should do it about mid-preach. Amen, Rolf. No. Um, but yeah, we ha- actually have to be a body. We have to come alongside each other. We have to encourage. Well, actually, we have to work together uh, to build his kingdom. Uh, and I, I, I pray that our hearts are open for, for this last point here. Um, and it's, am I doing enough? Am I doing enough? And hear me, family, I, this is not, uh, it sounds a bit of a cheeky title and a bit of a cheeky challenge. Um, and it's not designed uh, to be a, 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 a question to condemn. It's a trick question because the answer is always going to be no. We can never do enough for the Lord because we are a broken people. We have our own selfish desires. We have our own um, ideas of what we want and what we should do um, that are always going to come in the way. It's only through His grace that we can continuously come back to Him and go, no, I need to realign myself with you. And this question is not about, ooh, yeah, no, I could perhaps serve on teas and coffees a little bit more or I could do another an extra slot of kids. This question is more about... Um, your state of our hearts. Like, do actually, we want to strive to do more because we know we can. Um, do we want to be able to strive so that if God was to appear before us and say, are you doing, do you feel you do enough? We can go, yes, I know that I'm striving to do all that I can do. And are we really willing to lay down our lives for his cause? Um, we've likened ourselves already to being um, like a body. And we read in Ephesians 4.16, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Um, We need to be working and functioning properly. And I feel there's actually three little points about this thing of uh, working and functioning properly correctly um, that we can take away from this. Um, so it's, it's something else to share just about, about myself, and I don't claim this over my life. This is something I've had d- uh, varying degrees of, of 
healing over. Um, uh, but it is something that I do struggle with from time to time, and that, that's asthma. It's that my lungs don't work sometimes. They just decide, you know what? You don't need oxygen today. <laughs> and it's not comfortable. So when they don't work, actually the rest of the body suffers. And it's the exact same in here. If <laughs> one of us decides not to work, the rest of the body suffers. The rest of the body suffers. And going back to those new Christians who, um, uh, who want to actually uh, do all this and they want, uh, they want to evangelize, they want to tell people, and when that sort of uh, zeal runs out, what they need is equipping. Do you know, family, we belong, we are so privileged to belong to a church who is so determined to equip its saints. We read, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. We, as living hope, as, as part of, of, that, of that scripture, 4.12, we are so determined to be able to equip us as saints to, to do the works of ministry set before us, to build his kingdom. At the moment, we've got three equips going on. Earlier in the year, we had equips. Um, uh, during the summer, we had the 412. We've got two more regional equips coming up also. Can I challenge you? In your heart, are you willing to be shaped? Are you willing to grow? Are you willing to allow the elders uh, of the church um, and the leadership, the authority over us, to actually say, you need to grow in this area? Can I, can I challenge you? Are you? Have you done an equip? Again, it's not a guilt trip, but examine your heart. Are you willing to be shaped? Secondly, actually we need to bring our gifts. We need to bring our gifts. We read in 1 Peter 4, 10 to 11, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies in order that in everything God may be glorified through Christ Jesus. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. We all do have gifts. We all are equipped in some way or other for, by God himself uh, to actually bring something to the house, to bring something um, that can further his kingdom. Like I said before, my lungs sometimes don't work. Um, and it affects my body. Um, so guys, what, c what, what can you bring? What is, what is your gift? And if you don't know, seek, seek for it. Seek the gift. Just step out. You know what? I don't know if I can do kids' work, but yeah, I'll go and serve on kids' work. Step out. That's actually, amen, yes. I need to hear the Castletown congregation hear that as well. Um, but yes, we, we, we actually we need to be stepping up. We, we, we need to be bringing what we've got. Cause, and not to labor the point, because if you don't, we're actually robbing the family. Because actually, it's a gift God has given you specifically for this family. Actually, if we hide it... <laughs> It's actually not going to have the effect God wants to, it, wants it to. And thirdly, um, do you share the gospel, and can you share more? Do you share the gospel, and can you share more? Um, our primary function will now and forever be in this lifetime uh, to share the good news that Jesus uh, has died. Um, one easy way to do more is actually to start saying to people, do you know what, I need to tell you about Jesus. And it's easy to fall into that rut of go, oh, I do my little bit, I have my odd conversation here, I say God bless to people. That, that, that's not enough. That's not warning people of what awaits for them if they don't know Jesus. And I'm talking to myself as well. But actually we need to have an urgency about it because it's an urgent thing. Um, uh, 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 something again I've shared on once or twice is I, I lost my dad to cancer five years ago um, and I prayed and prayed and prayed for years um, he only gave his life two weeks um, before he passed away 
And I thank God every day that he did. If I hadn't spoken to him, if I hadn't just gone, you know what, no, you need to believe, otherwise this is what's going to happen, he would never have believed. Family, who are we, who are we going to be sharing the gospel with? Who, who is it that we're going to say, do you know what, I, I love you as a friend, I love you too much to let you um, actually go to that place. So here it is, this is the gospel. Even if it costs you that friendship, I would rather be more afraid of him um, than I would of um, other people. And um, I'm going to finish just with this little sentiment, um, something an, an old life group leader of mine, Joel Brockett, shared with us, uh, with me years ago when I did my internship with the church, funnily enough. He said one of his worst nightmares is when he's going on that escalator up and he can see this train of people going down and one person looks and goes, hey, you knew, you knew this would happen to me and you never told me what's going on. Why didn't you? Why didn't you tell me? And that's always stuck with me. And I think we need to have that attitude of, um, we, we need to tell everybody. We, it's, it's, we, that, that is our purpose. Um, Rolf, would you like to um, come back up? <laughs>